So it's COVID and you're going nuts. So you pick a new hobby and you build on that hobby, but it never feels like it reaches its apex. Something's missing. That was me a couple months ago. Full disclosure, this is not a sponsored video. Everything we discuss here today was purchased by myself and all opinions discussed are that of my own. Additionally, I ate two homemade cookies before filming and those weren't meant for me. They were meant for my kids. Now that that's out of the way, let me explain my use case and the process that led me to be doing this review. I was primarily streaming my music through Spotify off of a Mac, PC, or an iOS device. This was connected to a DAC, which was hooked up through a headphone amplifier using various headphones. Not going to be getting into speakers today. So this craziness started somewhere around Christmas 2020. I subscribed to Tidal Hi-Fi, which was four bucks for four months. Pretty great, right? I really liked the way the app was integrated. and. I found myself using it a lot. So later I bought a MQA decoder DAC to take full advantage of Tidal. I managed to get BitPerfect readout, which was great, and discovered tons of new music through their search suggestions. I really enjoyed myself with it. Until Golden Sound came out with his video on how Tidal is basically BitPerfect snake oil. One thing I'm learning is that audio is really tough on us because there's a lot of BS in this industry. Once you lose trust in a company like Tidal, there's no going back. So now I need to find a new streaming service, which isn't so tough because I'm in Canada and we don't have a lot of options. We don't have Cobuzz, for example. Since I wanted high res, I was basically limited to Amazon. I signed up for a three month trial and have been streaming that since. Perfect solution here? No, unfortunately, not, not so much. Connected to the same DAC that was used for Tidal, my bitrate wasn't changing anymore. It sounded okay, but no matter what bitrate Amazon HD was playing, my DAC would always read the same one and never change. There's an exclusive mode toggle that seems to make it a bit louder, but it won't properly control my DAC. So I tried calling Amazon tech support, which was of no help. I tried running it off of a Mac, a PC, um, an iPad, and an iPhone, all with the same result. Really, really frustrating. So, okay. On one end, you have BitPerfect, well-programmed title that basically lies to you about the quality of audio being lossless. And on the other end, you have actual lossless audio through Amazon programmed so badly that you don't get high resolution in bit perfect form. What a convoluted disorganized mess. Enter YouTuber Joey G. This legend reviews the Blue Sound Node 2i and in the review says that you actually get bit perfect with Amazon HD. Could this be a trap I thought to myself? So I decided to try it out and was just about to order the 2i when an updated version got announced. I didn't want to wait till June 9th, but sucked it up and pre-ordered anyways. So, was Joey G right? Now you know where I'm coming from, let's talk about the node. Shortly after the unbox, I plugged it in, hooked it up to my DAC and router, downloaded the app on my phone, and was guided through a longish firmware update process. Later on, I was able to set up my Amazon account with the Blue Sound app, and all was set. Not too difficult and no real frustrations here. So the first track I checked out was ACDC's Back in Black at 24 bit, 192 kilohertz. Only it was quiet, like super quiet. So I looked at my phone and noticed I had volume control on the app and it was just set really low. Remote volume control was something I had to give up with my current setup. So this is actually a huge convenience should I need it. I set volume control back to fixed and back in black sounded really freaking good. So now let's see if I'm getting Amazon HD and bit perfect. 
like we discussed before, my Denifrip stack would always show 24192 and never change because that's what I had it set to on the computer. So the real test here is trying a song that's got lower bit rate and seeing if it changes on the DAC. David Bowie and Queens Under Pressure came to mind at 16 bit 44.1 kilohertz. So I started playing that and boom, my DAC switched to the correct lower bit rate. I get bit perfect now, finally. <laughs> so now that everything's working properly, how does streaming through the node compare with USB directly from my computer? This was really easy for me to compare because I'm able to switch inputs on my Dataflip stack rather quickly. My first test track was Baby Driver by Simon and Garfunkel. The node played the track with fuller bass, it was clearer, cleaner, basically high resolution. I A-B tested Beyond the Horizon by Bob Dylan at 16-bit 44 kilohertz and realized the same difference between the two audio transports. It's like the Blue Sound node wakes each track up and says, no, no, this is the way, <laughs> and I can't disagree. Switching music styles, I chose Bixby Canyon Bridge by Death Cab for Cutie. It was just way more immersive on the node. Then Black by Danger Mouse featuring Nora Jones. I felt like I was way more inside my music on the node versus the computer as a music transport. Then Friends by Flume. Basically, way more punchy and sounded amazing. I'm sure you could see a pattern by now. I don't think there's a point to keep comparing the node to my PC anymore. There's just no need to beat a dead horse any further. I keep wanting to stop listening so I can get on with writing up the rest of my review, and then the next song comes on and I'm like, oh, okay, one more. No ear fatigue, and everything I'm listening to feels like it's at its best compared to every other time I've heard it. I'll just leave you with a list of everything I AB'd with the same noticeable result. So finally, I feel like I'm getting my money's worth. One mantra I kept hearing from audio experts online was that the PC is an awful place to play music off of. This I initially dismissed because digital's digital, right? No, not at all. I'll leave a link below from Hans Bickhausen's channel that gets more in depth on this, but highlight a couple points here on why it's better to go directly through your network streamer. First off, your PC requires properly coded software for bit perfect playback. Number two, Multiple clocks in the PC interfere with the audio clock causing jitter. And number three, acoustic noise from fans, GPU, hard disks will also diminish sound quality. And now let's talk about build quality and aesthetics. I touched on this a bit in my unbox video linked below. This is a really sleek and solidly built piece of kit. No rattles and nicely weighted. It's a small unassuming size and doesn't get warm at all while in use. The lights default to a bright blue with white touch sensitive controls on top. Not a huge fan of the blue lights honestly, but the nice thing here is you can set them to turn off unless you trigger the proximity sensor above. They stay on long enough to use and then fade to off in a couple of seconds. This is great for me as I'm not even using the touch sensitive controls. They do however come in handy for someone with, for example, a living room speaker setup, as you can program them to start your playlist or adjust volume without having to pick up your phone. I think the minimalist no actual button approach Blue Sound took with the updated node looks much better than previous iterations. It'll fit in nicely wherever you end up placing it in your home, so nothing to really complain about here. I have the node connected to my DAC via coax using a Mogami Gold RCA cable. I did try USB to the DAC and it wouldn't work. I got an error message and the DAC said it was playing DSD 24.5. According to Blue Sound, this should get fixed in a future firmware update. That should happen within two months from the time of this review. Now the node comes with its own internal Burr Brown DAC that I wanted to test out. I was able to connect some fancy AudioQuest RCA cables to the same amp I had my Denifrip stack connected to through XLR cables. Both XLR and RCA were working at the same time, so I was able to A-B the difference pretty easily. My big R2R DAC did sound noticeably better once volume matched, but having said that, the Node's internal Burr Brown DAC was definitely no slouch. It sounded totally acceptable, and I feel if you don't already own a good standalone DAC, this would serve you very well until you start to itch and decide to upgrade. An awesome streamer with a respectable built-in DAC. I was actually surprised because researching the older Node 2i, 
its DAC was one of the only complaints people had. This one is supposed to be slightly improved and I like it. Blue Sound's Blue OS app actually has a lot in common with the Sonos app. It seems quite a bit faster, but that may be on account of just having one unit connected directly to my router through Ethernet, as opposed to a whole house of Wi-Fi mesh speakers being managed through the Sonos app. I do like that I can get another node and set up a nice speaker system somewhere else in my house, then control it with the same app. I'll probably end up doing this down the road. Once you open the app, you're able to play music almost instantaneously. There's a root directory with my playlists, presets, and favorites. Since I'm not relying on stored media, I have nothing in these sections, so it was a bit confusing for me at first. If you look down a bit, there it is, Amazon Music. If I go into that, all my safe stuff from Amazon's native app is accessible. One thing I can't quite figure out is how to get it to keep playing similar tracks the way Amazon would always recommend in its native app. I normally discover a lot of new music that way, so this was a bit of a letdown. Switching to a track that's not queued up isn't as instantaneous as you would expect playing directly from your computer. It takes about three seconds. This makes sense because I'm accessing all of this music remotely. That's also a big pro in my opinion. I have the app installed on my iPad, iPhone, Mac, PC, pretty much everywhere. I could just use whatever's in close proximity and play my music. I like this a lot. I get a similar experience no matter how I interface with the node. Great programming here. There are a lot of well thought out features and options for those of you that have downloaded offline music. Most of what I have is old crappy quality MP3s, so I'm just gonna rely on streaming. Another minor annoyance I have with the Blue Sound app and Amazon is it seems that I'm unable to add songs to my music. From the Blue Sound app, it lets me thumbs up the song, but if I wanna actually add it to my library, I have to open up Amazon's native app, search the track, and add from there, which is just silly. It's a lot of extra effort that takes you out of the trance that this new song puts you in. Now that I have a much clearer picture of what this thing does, here's a list of pros and cons. So as you can see, my journey in high-res audio has been a bit of a gauntlet run until now. Frustrated with that Amazon app not giving me bit perfect, I wanted to see if there was an audible difference with a streamer that properly utilizes data coming from these tracks. And I'm so glad I did. Now, does it sound better because I'm getting actual bit perfect, or is it because I'm using a separate clean music transport? Probably a combination of both. What I do know is this is the sound I've been chasing for months. Simply put, the Blue Sound node obliterates any of my computers or iOS devices in sound quality. It takes that one thing and does it exceptionally well. So if you're specking out a new audio system, I'd recommend purchasing this node before buying a separate standalone DAC. You'll save a bit of cash this way and notice a much bigger jump in sound quality. This streamer or one like it should really be thought of as a must buy for those of you that want an easy, great sounding hi-fi audio setup. So yeah, the node's my new bit perfect best friend. I feel like the problems that I do have with it are the type that could easily be fixed via new firmware or software down the road. I honestly think it's gonna give so many of you ear to ear grins. Do yourselves a favor, get a blue sound node. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. And I'd like to thank you guys for sticking around and watching my first review. We got this. Shake it off, buddy. Shake it off. We got this. <laughs> oh my God. We did it, baby. We did it.